Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health, everyone. I'm Michelle Krosmer, renal dietitian and Dr. Hashmi. And question for you, Dr. Hashmi, how can someone with kidney disease that's following a low protein diet gain muscle? Do they, if they're working out and they're trying to put on muscle, do they need to be eating more protein? Yeah, so this is an interesting question. And, and, and I was thinking about this and I was wondering, you know, is it because our kidney patients are gonna become the next Arnold Schwarzenegger or not? So. I'm going to talk a little bit differently in the sense that when we talk about muscle, what we're really saying is, is when you lose muscle with chronic kidney disease, the outcomes are quite severe. So your quality of life is worse. Your risk of dying goes up. Your risk of hospitalization goes up. So muscle loss in chronic kidney disease in ESRD is a very bad thing. That's number one. Number two to understand is protein is not the only thing needed for muscle. Now, what does that mean? When we talk about building muscle, what you have to understand is you can eat all the protein in the world. You won't gain any muscle unless you're telling your muscles that they need to build. So building comes from the idea of breaking down muscle fibers. That means resistance training. So if you're not doing resistance training, then you're not really telling the muscles to need extra protein. So all that extra protein is going to filter out. The other thing with chronic kidney disease to remember is it's not just about adding more protein. It's also the fact that even things like the activation of the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone uh, pathway, the RAS system that we talk about, that in itself causes inflammation. So if you're trying to build muscle and you have all this RAS system that's built up, you know, the reason we give ACE inhibitors and aldosterone antagonists, so your lisinoprils, benazoprils, and allopril's, is because we're trying to shut this pathway down. And by shutting it down, we're also reducing inflammation. The other thing is, is if you have a lot of acid in the blood, it doesn't matter if you increase more protein, you're going to worsen the acid, which means you're actually going to break down more muscle, you're going to break down more bones going on. So metabolic acidosis is another aspect that you have to fix. So it's not just protein. The next thing is, is when we get patients who one, they may not have advanced CKD, but they may be higher risk for what we call sarcopenia, which is age-related, essentially muscle decline going on. When we see people who are either malnourished, low muscle going on, they're aging, we will actually increase the amount of protein they get. So we talk about 0.6 to 0.8, but 0.6 to 0.8 is what we use in patients who are much further along in their chronic kidney disease pathway, meaning they're already at that point where they're down to maybe stage four going on. Maybe they're close to stage five. We want to restrict their protein or maybe they're earlier on, but they're spilling a lot of protein. For those patients, we restrict protein. For others who are vulnerable to things like sarcopenia, we actually increase their protein, but we don't just increase any type of protein. What is the best type of protein in kidney disease? It is soy, soy, and soy. We've talked about all of the data around this, and soy protein is the best protein that we know so far based on the literature when it comes to kidney disease. So we focus on plant-based proteins. We focus specifically on soy being optimal. And if you want to gain muscle, if you're on dialysis, I don't care. If you have chronic kidney disease, I still don't care. You have to lift weights. You have to. I don't care if it's a one pound weight or whatever pound weight it is, but you got to add resistance training because when you do, you are literally adding days, weeks, months, years to your life. So if you want to improve muscle, yes, you may need more protein, but more important than that, you got to get rid of inflammation. You got to add resistance training. You got to eat more plant foods so you have lower acidosis in the body going on. So your body is ready to take that protein and use it to build high quality muscle. And that's it. I love that. Thank you. That's a great explanation and pointing out that it's not just, again, like many things, it's not just the protein intake. We got to fix everything else that's going on. So thank you guys. And we'll see you next time.